Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. And I'm very pleased and proud to be bringing you another edition of what you guys seem to enjoy the most, and that is bad baseball. You know, anybody can bring you the great teams. Anybody can bring you an all-star game. But only Kurt Berglund brings you bad baseball. I'm talking about teams that barely knew where first base was. And today I'm especially pleased and proud that we are going north of the border to our neighbors in Canada for bad baseball. We're in Montreal today at Park Jari. Or is it Jari? Or is it Jerry? Nobody really knows. But your 1977 Toronto Blue Jays, and don't get me wrong, Blue Jay fan, I do believe there are worse teams in your franchise history than the 1977 Blue Jays. But it's a theme. Not only is it Canada Day on bad baseball, but it's Expansion Day. So it's the 1977 Toronto Blue Jays at the 1969 Montreal Expos. Now these two teams were not good. They both qualify for the bad baseball label with flying colors, believe me. But I do want to point out one thing, and that is that the 69 Expos made some trades during the year and they picked up some guys that made them a significantly different team at the end than they were at the beginning. And I'm talking about, of course, the immortal Ron Fairley and the equally immortal Bob Bailey. So they did have a little bit of punch to their attack by the end of the season. But make no mistake, this team was not good. And <laughs> you're going to find that out in spades today. Our pitching matchup is a good one. If you like bad baseball, Dave Lamanchek, a 13 game winner for the 77 Blue Jays will be opposed by Bill Stoneman, an 11 game winner for the 55 win 69 Expos. So, with no further ado, let's enjoy, really enjoy, bad baseball, payoff pitch. That sounds easy to say. Payoff pitch is our game engine today. And uh, let's get to the starting lineups at Park Jari or Jari Park or Jerry Park or a park for a guy named Jerry. In the description for this video is the link to channel membership. With channel membership to my channel, you get discounts in the secondary store, and I've got a good one coming up in two days. You're not going to believe it. Loaded with discounts and bargains, and you can get bigger discounts. Uh, if you are a channel member, you get $10 off per set, $2 off per team that you buy. Uh, you also get access to... Uh, members only videos where I do uh, play tips and lots of stuff uh, to make your uh, baseball gaming more enjoyable and the last thing is you get a free gift from me every month so check that out the link is below in the description for this video and for your 1977 Blue Jays Bob Baylor leads off not Bay Lee that's a different guy this is Bob Baylor leading off at shortstop. Steve Staggs. Bats, bats second at second base. Alvin Woods bats third in left field. Otto Velez bats fourth and right. Roy Howell bats fifth at third. Doug Alt bats sixth at first base. John Scott bats seventh in center. And Alan Ashby will bat eighth. He's going to do the catching. And Dave Lamanchek will be on the mound for the Blue Jays. He had 34 starts and 11 complete games. 
Good for 252 innings of work. He was 13 and 16 with a 4.25 earned run average in 1977. He, of course, started with the Detroit Tiger franchise. For the homestanding Montreal Expo, as Ty Klein's going to lead it off in center field. Gary Sutherland bats second at second base. Mac Jones, the mayor of Jonestown, bats third in left field. Rusty Staub bats fourth and right. Coco LeBoy bats fifth at third. Ron Fairley bats sixth at first base. John Bateman bats seventh and catches. And Bobby Wine bats eighth. He'll play short. On the mound, it's Bill Stoneman, the ace of the staff, was 11 and 19 with a 4.39 ERA at 36 starts. Six relief appearances and eight complete games. Good for 235 innings of work. Here we go with Bob Baylor stepping into the batter's box. I've got my dice ready as well as my FACs, or as the kids like to say, fast action cards. And the delivery from Bill Stoneman. And there's a base hit for Bob Baylor. This one's going to go into the right field, drop in front of Rusty Staub, and Baylor's aboard with a leadoff single on the top of the first. We are underway with bad baseball, my friends. Steve Skaggs. Staggs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Steve Staggs gets the signs from Manager Roy Hartsfield, and he's going to square to bunt immediately, and he gets it down. He bunts it back to Bill Stoneman, who fires to Gary Sutherland covering first, and that'll move Bob Beeler to second base. And that'll bring up Alvin Woods with a chance to drive in a run in the top of the first. Stoneman the stretch and the delivery, and we have a defense check, and that's not going to be a... That's going to be a terrifying thing in this ball game, I promise you. We got to the kitchen. Oh, my God, it's a ranch, Jack. All right. Now, Bobby Wine, in his day, was a pretty decent shortstop. But by 1969, he had dropped into the average level. All right, so he's going to make a play on this ball, 46 to 99, and he does not make that play. Instead, it is going to get through into left center field, and that is going to score Bob Baylor with the first run of the game in the top of the first. Alvin Woods defies bad baseball and drives in a run. One nothing Blue Jays. Here's Otto Velez. Stoneman the stretch and the pitch to Otto. Hey, struck him out. He got him on a bender. Stoney with two down now in the top of the first, and Roy Howell comes to the plate. The stretch by Stoneman and the pitch to Howell. Roy swings and he drills this one. It's going to be into right field, cut off in the gap. By Rusty Stop. Look at the wheels Rusty put on on that one. He turned on the afterburners. Al Wood stops at third. The Blue Jays have runners at second and third on a double by Howell. And here's the man with the first home run in Toronto Blue Jay history. IRL, or as the kids like to say, in real life. Stoneman the stretch trying to get out of the first. The pitch to Alt is swung on by Doug, and that is bounced to second. Gary Sutherland to his left, gloves it and flips to Ron Fairley at first, and that will retire the Blue Jays in the top of the first inning. But they do get a run on three hits. They leave two. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Blue Jays one, and the Expos coming to bat. Ty Klein, Gary Sutherland, and Mac Jones. The delivery to Klein, and he draws a walk. So both teams get their leadoff man on in the first. Here's Gary Sutherland. Lemon check the stretch and the delivery, and Sutherland squares to bunt. He bunts one toward Doug Alt, who turns and flips to 
Steve Staggs covering second. That'll move Ty Klein up, covering first, and that'll move Ty Klein to second. Here's Mac Jones. Let me check the stretch and the delivery to Mac Jones. Is swung on, that's hit to center. John Scott pounds the glove and makes the catch. Ty Klein is going to tag up and advance to third and... Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. He's going to hold on at second base, and that'll bring up Staub with a chance to tie the game. LaBoy, Coco would be next. The stretch and the delivery by Lemanchek. It's a bouncer to Doug Alt at first. He's going to take it to the bag, unassisted for out number three. And we've played one inning of bad baseball, let me assure you. Uh, with your score, the Blue Jays won and the Expos nothing. Bottom third of the Jays order coming to bat here in the second. Scott, Ashby, and Lamanchek. Stoneman deals to John Scott. And we'll have another defense check. Yikes. It's hit to third. That's Coco LeBoy country. He is an E3. And 57 or better is what he needs to make this play. And he makes the play. I mean, he makes the play <laughs> to Ron Fairley at first for out number one. And now Alan Ashby comes to the plate. Stoneman kicks and delivers. And Ashby strikes out. Stone takes him up the ladder. And that's strikeout number two for the Expos right-hander. Here's the man check. The wind and the delivery by Steve Stone. And he strikes out the man check for out number three. A one, two, three second inning. And we go to the bottom of the second. And it's the Blue Jays one and the Expos nothing. Le check will face the boy fairly in Bateman in the bottom of the second. Lonchek winds and deals. He strikes out Coco. First strikeout for Dave Lamanchek and Ron Fairley comes to the plate. The wind and the delivery to the former Dodger is swung on by Fairley and bounced to Steve Staggs at second. He gloves it and throws to Doug Alt for out number two. Now in the trades, there's a saying, and I believe it to be true, and that is there's no stopping John Bateman. You can only hope to contain him. And he's coming to the plate now. The delivery to him is a ballpark check for Park Jari. That's an 82. That'll be in play. Hit in the air to left. Al Woods is over by the foul line. He's going to make the catch for out number three. We have two innings of bad baseball in the books, and it's Toronto 1 and Montreal nothing. It's bad baseball Canada style. Top of the order coming for the Jays in the third. Baylor, Stags, and Woods. Stoneman winds and delivers. And Baylor swings, and he grounds one to Sutherland at second. On two hops. Gary throws to Ron Fairley, and there's one away. Here's Steve Staggs. Stoneman winds and deals. And Staggs grounds one to Sutherland. And Gary charges, gloves it, flips to Ron Fairley, and there's two away. Now here's Al Woods, who's got the only RBI in the game. Stoneman deals to him. Hit in the air to right. Back a few steps is Rusty Staub, and he's got it for out number three. Stoneman with seven in a row retired. We go to the bottom of the third. And your score is Toronto one and Montreal nothing. It'll be Wine, Stoneman, and Klein. 8-9-1 coming up in Gene Mock's order in the bottom of the third. Lamanchek winds and delivers. That's a defense check. And we always shudder in bad baseball when there's a defense check. Going to be an error check on Roy Howell. And let me tell you, as a Brewer fan, you don't want that uh, because Roy Howell could do some scary things 
to the people sitting in the first base box seats. Just believe me. Uh, this will be a, he's a, an error three. So he needs a 57 or better, or the people in the first base boxes are going to have to duck for cover. And they are. Duck, people. Duck. That's a one base error. And that will put uh, Bobby Wine at first base. So the Expos don't have a hit yet, but they have had two base runners. Here's Bill Stoneman coming to the plate. And everybody in the ballpark knows what he's going to be asked to do. The delivery from Lamanchek to Stoneman. And that is bunted. Uh, that is bunted back to Lamanchek. And let's see if he's going to be able to make this play. Um, he needs a 57 or better. He makes the play to first base to retire Stoneman. That's a 1-4 put out that moves Bobby Wine to second. Chance for the Expos to tie the game here with Ty Klein coming to the plate. Member of the National League pennant winning Cincinnati Reds just one year later. 1970, Lamanchek, the stretch and the delivery. And Ty Klein swings, and he grounds one to Staggs at second. Staggs throws to Alt. That retires Klein. Bobby Wine goes to third base on the play, and there's two away. It's all up to Gary Sutherland. Lamanchek is going to go from the windup, and the delivery to Sutherland. That's swung on by Gary and hit to center. Can of corn for... Center fielder John Scott, and he's got it for out number three. So the Expos threaten but don't score in the third inning. We go to the fourth, and your score is Toronto one and Montreal nothing. Velez, Howell, and Alt. And if there's anything that says bad baseball, it should be Velez, Howell, and Alt in the four, five, six slots in your order. Here's Bill Stoneman. Uh, and Velez draws a walk. So that breaks Stoneman's streak of seven in a row. And here's Roy Howell, who was no familiar, who was not unfamiliar with the concept of the 4 6 3 double play. He tried to pull everything. Unbelievable. Here's the delivery uh, from Stoneman to Howell. And he hits it to center. It's in the right center field gap. On the run is Ty Klein. He makes a running catch for out number one. Retreating to first is Otto Velez. And now Doug Alt comes to the plate. Alt is 0 for 1. Stoneman the stretch and the delivery. Alt. Line drive caught by a leaping Gary Sutherland. Two down. Velez still nailed to that first base bag. And John Scott comes to the plate with Alan Ashby on deck. The delivery by Stoneman, and that's going to be a ballpark check for John Scott. And that's a wheelhouse for John Scott. Uh-oh. This one is hit to short. Gloved by Bobby Wine. He's going to go the short way to Sutherland covering second, and that's going to retire Toronto in the fourth inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth, and your score is Toronto 1 and Montreal nothing. We had a good one in bad baseball. Mac Jones comes to the plate. The meat, if that's the expression I'm looking for, of the Expos order is coming to the plate in the fourth. Jones, Staub, and Leboy. Lamont check, wines, and deals, and that'll be a D. Ooh, another defense check. This is hit to... Doug Alt at first base. And let's just say, uh-oh. He needs an 88 or better. He got it. Doug Alt makes the play. Wowzers. Against all odds, Doug Alt comes up with that one. 
He's picking him at first. He's nodding his head down there. He's feeling cocky. All right, Dave Lamonchek faces Rusty Staub. The delivery to him. And that's hit to right. Over by the foul line is Otto Velez. And he makes the catch for out number two. Now it's Coco LeBoy. Nobody on for Coco. Lamonchek winds and deals. And Coco grounds one to short. Gobbled up, if that's the expression I want to use, by Bob Baylor. He fires to Doug Alt, who's still feeling cocky from his play to lead off the inning. And that'll retire the Expos 1-2-3 in the fourth. Lamanchek still throwing a no-no. We go to the fifth, and your score is Toronto 1 and Montreal nothing. Stoneman is going to face Ashby, Lamanchek, and Baylor, 8-9-1 in the Toronto order in the fifth. The wind-up by Bill Stoneman in the delivery. Hey, struck out Ashby, made him look sick. That's four strikeouts for Bill Stoneman. And it brings up the pitcher. We're not doing the DH in Park Jari, Jerry Park, and the delivery is swung on by Lamanchek. It's hit to left, but coming in quickly is Mac Jones. And even with a bad knee, Mac Jones makes that catch for out number two. Bob Baylor comes to the plate, one for two. Stoneman deals to him. Baylor swings, and there's another base hit for Bob Baylor. Look at Bob Baylor tearing it up. It's hit into center field where Ty Klein will collect it and get it back in. And let's see what happens here. They've got a lot of choices here with Steve, with a Steve Staggs at the plate. Uh, boy, let's see here. Well, they could send him. All right, let's see what they do. Staggs digs in that batter's box. The stretch by Stoneman. And the delivery, and there goes a Bob Baylor trying to steal second base. The throwdown from Bateman to Sutherland is going to be uh, okay. One to three, he is going to be out. No, he's safe. He slides in under that Gary Sutherland tag. He's in scoring position, and now Staggs is at the plate. We're not playing injuries with bad baseball. we got enough problems. All right, here's, here's Stoneman. The stretch and the delivery to Staggs. Hey, struck him out. Bill Stoneman took Steve Staggs up the ladder. We're halfway through this one. Toronto won, Montreal nothing. And Dave Lamanchek is throwing a no no at the Expos. All right, let's see how long that continues. Ron Fairley, John, like the irresistible force in the <laughs> immovable object. <sighs> All right, Fairley, Bateman, and Wine, 6 7 8. The wind up and the delivery by Lamanchek. And he strikes out Ron Fairley. Second strikeout for Dave Lamanchek. And John Bateman comes to the plate. Bobby Wine on deck. Lamanchek the delivery. Swung on and hit to second. Steve Staggs throws to Doug Alt for out number two. And Bobby Wine comes up. Bill Stoneman would be next. Lamanchek kicks and deals. Another defense check. Boy, we've had a lot of them. Error check for Bob Baylor at shortstop. Bob Baylor, kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Versatile guy. Uh, he is, he needs a 57 or better to avoid an ugly E6. Hey, makes the play to Doug Alt for out number three. Look at Lamanchek, nine in a row retired. 
All right, we go to the sixth. Lamont check still throwing a no no. Your score is Toronto one and Montreal nothing. Stoneman's got to keep his team in it. All right, so it's Woods, Velez, and Howell coming up in the Toronto sixth inning. Stoneman kicks and delivers. Woods swings and hits it to center. This will drive Klein back a few steps. But he's got room and makes the catch for out number one. Otto Velez up there now. He's 0 for 1. Stoneman kicks and delivers to him. Velez swings and launches it to left. Mac Jones, warning track, wall. He makes the catch for out number two. One more biscuit for breakfast, and Al oh, Velez hits that one out of here, but no. They're swimming in the pool at Park Jari in deep, deep right field. Rusty Staub hit one in the hit one in the pool in the nineteen sixty nine season. And the fact that I know that terrifies me more than a little bit. All right, the delivery by Stoneman is hit to center. Ty Klein pounds the glove and makes the catch for out number three. We go to the bottom of the six. We got a good one. Bad baseball. Toronto one, Montreal nothing. I did some research on this. You're not supposed to say Toronto. You're supposed to say Toronto. But I don't say Toronto. I say Toronto. So if that upsets any of our friends to the north, my deepest apologies. All right, the sixth inning, the top of the sixth is in the books. And that's more on the pronunciation of Toronto than you ever wanted to know. All right, here's Stoneman. I could hit for him, but he's, no, I'm not going to do that. Plus, I've taken a hard look at the 1969 Expos bullpen. And let me tell you, those aren't firemen. Those are arsonists out there. And so we're going to avoid using that pen at all costs, believe me. All right, Stoneman, Klein, Sutherland coming up in the Expo 6th. Lamanchek winds and deals. And he strikes out his counterpart for strikeout number three. A no-hitter through five and a third for the Blue Jays' right-hander. Here's Ty Klein. Lamanchek deals. Swung on by Klein and hit to left. Dying quail. Here comes Al Woods, but he's going to get there for out number two. Gary Sutherland comes to the plate. Rust, or Mac Jones would be next. Lamanchek deals. And it's swung on by Sutherland and bounced to Steve Staggs, who makes a nice play. Cuts it off from going up the middle. Plants and throws to Doug Alt. They get Gary Sutherland by a step at first. That'll retire the Expos in the sixth. Lamanchek still with a no-no through six. We go to the seventh. It's Toronto one and Montreal nothing. Alt, Scott, and Ashby. Six, seven, eight coming up for manager Roy Hartsfield in the seventh. Stoneman kicks and delivers. And Doug Alt draws a walk. So, a leadoff man aboard for the Blue Jays in the seventh. And John Scott comes to the plate. Stoneman the stretch and the delivery to Scott. Swung on by John Scott. That's going to be a base hit. And that will be up the middle into center field. Around second goes Doug Alt. He's going to streak, if that's the word I'm looking for, to third base. And there's Blue Jays at the corners with nobody out in the seventh. And I'm going to be forced to get that bullpen going for Montreal. They're going to force me to get them going, even though I don't want to use them. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's just not pretty out there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm going, however, we're going to have Howie Reed and Don Shaw. Lefty ready, double barrel action, just the way Gene Mock likes it with his crullers. 
getting getting loose in the bullpen. The Expos infield is going to play in because they're showing very few signs of life against Blue Jay right-hander Dave Lamanchek and Alan Ashby strolls to the plate. The Expos infield is in at all four spots. The stretch by Stoneman and the delivery to Ashby. And Alan Ashby drills a base hit. This goes to right field on a hop. <coughs> Excuse me. To Rusty Staub. Scoring easily is Doug Alt. Stopping at second is Scott. And the carnage continues. Here's Dave Lamanchek coming to the plate. 2 nothing Blue Jays. We're in the seventh. The stretch by Stoneman and the delivery to Lamanchek. He squares to bunt and he gets it down. Back to Stoney. He looks to third, but he makes the play to Sutherland covering first. The sacrifice moves the runners up to second and third. Scott to third, Ashby to second. There's one out now. Here's Bob Baylor. First base is open. Steve Staggs waits on deck. The infield remains in or moves back in for the Expos. 2 nothing Jays were in the seventh. Stoneman the stretch and the pitch. Swung on and hit to center. Uh, and that's Ty Klein coming in a couple of steps. John Scott... John Scott's going to try to score on the sacrifice fly. All right, here comes the throw from Ty Klein. Scott tags. Scott uh, Klein makes the catch. And the throw home to Bateman. And he's safe on the sacrifice fly. It's 3 nothing Jays. All right, Ashby comes to the plate. Uh, not Ashby, Staggs with Ashby at second. And Stoneman trying to get out of the seventh, the stretch, the delivery. And we have a ballpark check. That's going to be in play for Steve Staggs. It's bounced to Sutherland at second. Gary flips to Fairley, and that'll retire the Jays in the seventh. But they get a couple of insurance runs on two hits. They leave uh, one. Time to stretch them out at Park Jari. Uh, with your score, Toronto 3 and Montreal nothing. And Dave Lamanchek throwing a no-no. Jones, Staub, and the boy, the meat of Gene Mock's order coming up in the bottom of the seventh. Lamanchek winds and deals to Mac Jones. He hits a little comebacker to Lamanchek. He gloves it, throws to Alt, and there's one down in the seventh. We're starting to get into serious territory here. Here's Rusty Staub at 0 for 2. The Expos have had two base runners, a leadoff walk to Ty Klein in the first, and Bobby Wine reached on an error in the third. That's it. Lamanchek winds and deals to Staub. And it's a base hit for Rusty Staub to break up the no-no. Dave Lamanchek with a no-hitter through six and a third. Brings up Coco Lavoy. Staub on first base. Now the Expos bench comes to life. Toronto playing at double plate up. The stretch by Lamanchek and the delivery. Oh, we got a defense check. That could be ugly. And it's to Steve Staggs at second. We're checking for an error. His error number is a two. So he needs a 76 or better. And let me just say, that seems highly unlikely. <laughs> oh, he makes the play. Let's see what happens here. He's going to... Flip to Baylor for one, and the relay to Alt is in time for a soul-crushing, rally-killing, are-you-kidding-me, 4-6-3, four, six, four, six, double play turned by the Jays. 
Wow. We go to the eighth and your score is Toronto three and Montreal nothing. Well, if you had a double play happening in this game, you're, you got that bingo card. Uh, here's Al Woods, Otto Velez, and Roy Howell coming up in the Mont or in the Toronto eighth. Stoneman hanging on for dear life. He's on an extremely short leash. Reed and Shaw are ready in the Expos pen. The wind up and the delivery. Uh, and that's going to be swung on by Velez and drilled by Otto Velez. This is going to get off the wall and left. Mac Jones has to run it down. Uh, Woods around first, heading to second, and he's got a leadoff double in the eighth, and here comes Gene Mock. He has seen enough of Bill Stoneman. All right, so we're going to get more of Howie Reed than we really planned on today, but here he comes anyway. Tell you about Stoneman's day, and then we'll give you the depressing numbers for Howie Reed in 1969. Stoneman goes seven plus innings. Seven hits allowed, no home runs. He walked two and he struck out five. He has allowed three runs. They're all earned. And Woods at second base is his responsibility. Howie Reed is on the mound for Montreal. 31 games, 15 starts, two complete games, one save. He was 6-7 and seven with a 484 earned run average. He's a right-hander, and he's in to face Velez. Don Shaw continues to throw in the bullpen. And joining him is... Former Red Sox, Gary Wazlewski. All right, Velez up there now. He's 0 for 2. Read the stretch and the pitch to Otto Velez. And he walked him. Now that does set up a twin killing, which Roy Howell certainly is capable of hitting into. Howell is 1 for 3. Doug Alt is on deck. Howie Reed, the stretch and the delivery to Roy Howell. And we got a ballpark check. That's Wheelhouse for Roy Owl. Uh-oh. Howell drills a base hit. This will go to center field. Charging is Ty Klein. He's going to airmail a throw home. Woods is going to score. The airmailed throw is going to allow Velez to go to third. There's Blue Jays at the corners now. 4 nothing Toronto. And here's Doug Alt. The Expos infield moves in again. We're in the eighth. Howie Reed trying to stop the bleeding. Reed the stretch and the pitch to Alt. This is swung on and it's hit to short. <clears throat> uh, Wine was playing in. And the contact play was on. Otto Velez is coming home. Wine fires to Bateman, who tags out Velez for the first out in the eighth inning. Howell advances to second. Alt is safe at first on the fielder's choice. And here's John Scott. Alan Ashby on deck, first and second. The stretch by Reed and the delivery is swung on by Scott, and that is going to be hit to center. Uh, Ty Klein is going to make the catch, and Roy Howell will hold at second. Two down, here's Alan Ashby. Lamanchek would be next. Read the stretch, the pitch to the Toronto catcher, and he walked him. Bases are loaded. Here comes the Blue Jays pitcher today throwing a one-hitter. At the plate, Dave Lamanchek is 0 for 2. 
Reed to stretch the pitch to his counterpart. Lamanchak swings and grounds one to Sutherland at second. He flips to Fairley at first, and that'll retire the Blue Jays in the eighth. But after all that, they get one run on two hits. Say it with me, all oh, those bases on balls. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and your score is Toronto four and Montreal nothing. Lamanchak will face Fairley, Bateman, and Wine unless Gene Mock goes to his bench here in the eighth inning. Bateman is on deck. Lamanchak winds and pitches to Ron Fairley. And we'll have another defense check. Boy, oh boy, this is hit to third. That's Roy Howell. Everybody duck in the third base box seats, or first base box seats. Here is Howell. And he makes the play to Doug Alt for out number one. Well, everybody can come back up from cover now. Here's John Bateman, and I think they're going to hit for him. Not that the bench is loaded with good options. Don't get me wrong. Um, I know they can't. They, they got to let him bat. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad on that bench. Here's Lamanchek dealing to Bateman. And I struck him out. Number four for the Blue Jays right-hander. And I am... Uh, no, I'm not going to hit for wine either. Howie Reed is standing in the on-deck circle. The wind-up by Lamanchek and the delivery. Swung on by wine and bounced to Staggs at second. He throws to Alt, and the Montreal Expos are done in the eighth. We go to the ninth, and your score is Toronto four and Montreal nothing. Top of the order coming for the Jays. It's Baylor, Staggs, and Woods. Howie Reed is going to try and navigate his way through another inning. The wind-up in the delivery. Swung on by Baylor. It's bounced to third. That's Coco LeBoy by the third base bag. He fires across the diamond for out number one. Steve Staggs is 0 for 3. He did it. He did lay down a bunt in the first inning that led to a run. Reed kicks and delivers to the Blue Jays' second baseman. And he strikes out Steve Staggs. Second strikeout for Staggeruni. And that'll bring up Al Woods, who's 2 for 4, with a ribby and a run score. Reed kicks and deals. And Wood swings and hits one to third. Another chance for Coco LaVoy. This one to his left. He plants and throws to Fairley for out number three. It's put up or shut up time. We go to the bottom of the ninth and your score is Toronto four and Montreal nothing. Dave Lamanchek looking to finish off a one hitter. We're going to get a pinch hitter leading off for Howie Reed. And then we're going to get the top of the order Ty Klein and Gary Sutherland. And the pinch hitter is going to be Bob Beetle Bailey. One of their in-season acquisitions. He's hitting here for Reed to lead off the ninth. <clears throat> Dave Lamanchek winds and deals to the pinch hitter. And a base hit for Beetle Bailey. To lead off the bottom of the ninth, he is aboard. That brings up Ty Klein. And the Expo or the Blue Jay bullpen gets going. And that is almost as terrifying a place as the Expo's bullpen. It's very close between those two. Tom Murphy and Jerry Johnson are lefty righty double barreled action for Roy Hartsfield. And Ty Klein strolls to the plate. The man check, the stretch, and the delivery. Another defense check. This is hit to center. On the run is John Scott. Let's see if he can get there. He's a C. He's not going to get there if it's less than a 46. And he makes a running catch for out number one. 
Bailey scrambles back to first play, first base, and here's Gary Sutherland. Lamont check the stretch and the delivery to Sutherland is swung on and hit to Roy Howell at third. Howell gloves it. He fires to Staggs for one, and that's all they're going to get. Bob Bailey with a hard slide at second. Breaks up two. And that'll make Mac Jones the last chance saloon for the Expos with Sutherland at first and two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Four nothing Jays. The stretch by Lamanchek. The delivery. Swung on by Jones. It's hit to right. Back a few steps is Otto Velez, and he makes the catch for out number three and a Blue Jays winner. Let's give you the totals on this one. For the visiting and victorious 1977 expansion, Toronto Blue Jays, four runs. Eight base hits, and they committed one error. For Montreal, the homestanding Expos, no runs, and expansion Expos, no runs on two hits, and they committed uh, no errors. Winning pitcher is Dave Lamanchek, and I'm going to give him the star of the game. He threw a two-hitter, both of them singles, a seventh-inning single by Rusty Staub and a ninth-inning pinch-hit single by Bob Bailey. Uh, and that was it. He walked one, he struck out four, and, of course, notches the shutout. The loss goes to Bill Stoneman of the Expos, this has been Bad Baseball, courtesy of Payoff Pitch. Hope you enjoyed it. In the uh, description for this video is the link to channel membership. Don't forget to check that out. But for now, your final from Park Jari. The 1977 Toronto Blue Jays for the 1969 Montreal Expos. Nothing. Have a great evening. So long, everybody.